Talk about slow food. Baraka asks, snails anyone? On the north shore of New York's Long Island, nestled between a vineyard growing grapes for Pinot Noir and a herd of French cows, is a very small farm. Only uh, 300 square feet. Where Taylor Knapp raises snails. We say it's a small farm, but a large snail farm. In fact, his is the largest snail farm in the country. To be fair, there are only two. How many snails in here? You uh, right now it's about 50,000. We could probably fit another 50. A pretty extraordinary population density. He calls himself a snail wrangler. These snails are kind of hibernating. It's actually called estivating, when they kind of retract into their shells and they just kind of hang out on the walls like that. Look, that one's moving. It's just, it's, they do move. Yeah, they're hanging out. Were you a fan of snails growing up? I, I think the business opportunity of raising something in this country that wasn't being raised at the time was appealing. I mean, the best restaurants in the country, there's snails on their menu. And until we came around, those snails were coming out of a can from Asia or Europe, which is just insane. Taylor delivers his fresh snails to some of New York City's finest restaurants, like Franchette. Hey, Chef, how are you? Taylor, nice to see, you. to see you. Where Chef Lee Hansen uses them to make Briard, a kind of French scrambled eggs with escargot. Escargot is French for snail. Well, they're smaller than um, some of the snails you've had at restaurants. They're super flavorful. All those things that Taylor feeds him, you know, the herbs, the wild, foraging stuff that he gets. So these are all wild greens that we've picked for them. This is burdock, some dandelion, mustard cress. Yes, these Long Island snails eat well. These are uh, little tangerine marigolds, some goldenrod. So these are all wild plants that you'd find around Long Island, to kind of give them this Long Island terroir flavor. For snails, that old saying, you are what you eat, is especially true. We've had Michelin star restaurants ask us to feed them mint, and the snails uh, tasted just like mint. Some of them are cute. Yeah, they are. They're good-looking animals. We try, to, we try to avoid the word cute because they become dinner later. Can I hold one? Sure. Yeah. Just checking you out. Those little black dots on the top of their antennae are their eyes. And where are their ears? Uh, no ears. So this one can't hear me saying, how good looking it is. No, it can't say no. You have to express it in your face. And is this one a male or a female? They're both male and female. Actually, they're, they're hermaphrodites. Uh -huh. So all of these snails have both male and female sex organs, and any two of them could mate. Yeah. And yes, a single snail yeah, could, could also self-fertilize, go through the whole process and lay eggs all on its own. Yeah, there's no such thing as a lonely snail. That's right. Not, no, not in this world. And though these little creatures do move at a snail's pace... They reproduce very quickly, and they're voracious eaters. So when something is put in front of them to eat, they keep eating it until it's gone. So if they were in a crop of vegetables or someone's grapes, for instance, they could do a lot of damage. So a snail jailbreak is not a joke. Not a joke. Right? It's a real thing. So we're overseen by a part of the USDA that makes sure that that doesn't happen. And we've developed a lot of containment protocol so that that doesn't happen. You got it. You're wrangling. Whoa. Oh, you did it. Whoa. Get the whole thing. And they are uniquely flavorful. With garlic and butter. Or in a stew like babalucci. Or with your eggs on Sunday morning. Bon appetit.